Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Mike Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Crossroads Z1 231 FB front bedroom travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, there should be plenty of room for this awning to come in and out. On your off campsite, no slide to worry about. So let's talk about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power cord stores inside, just above your tires. And your water connection is going to be just ahead of that. So park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive and unhook our hitch, first thing we do is level our unit. Unit comes with a power tongue jack. We have a night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply lower or raise the unit until you're level. Should you uh, lose power, Inside here is a crank uh, manual override to get that up and down. Speaking of power, check your power every now and then. Make sure that hasn't wiggled loose going down the road. Once we got our unit level, next thing we're going to do, stabilize it. All four corners of the unit. Got the stabilizing jacks with three quarter inch socket on the end. You can use an impact driver or a drill gun. Yours is pretty close to the ground, so. Put a little uh, elbow grease into it. You have these down in a couple seconds. I do recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. It's gonna better distribute the weight. Take a run these down just until you've got some resistance on your hand crank. Remember, our unit's already level. We're just trying to stabilize it. Get all four of those down, and we can hook up our power and water. Again, I said your power cord stores inside here. Just reach in and pull it out, and when you're done, just shove it all back in there. Now, 30 amp cord, at the end of that 30 amp, should you need to plug into a 110, and your convenience pack will be a 30 to 15 amp reducer. Get your power hooked up, and hook up our water. At campsites, you're gonna hook up two city water connections. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. I always use this when putting fluid in your unit because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook up your water pressure regulator, hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet. One more step before doing that. Find your hot water heater and just make sure that your drain's in. Get that drain plug in there nice and snug. Um, I recommend plumber's putty or plumber's tape putty will gum up on you put some plumber's tape around that get that in there nice and tight once that's in there you can go ahead and turn that hose on after that hose has been on for a minute you go inside open up all of your water taps get all the air out of your lines get a nice steady flow of water going through them shut them off come out here lift up on your pressure release valve get some water coming out of there then you'll know your hot water heater's full and you'll turn that on from indoors now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping or boondocking. In that case, we'll fill up our fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. Don't leave that unattended while filling it. Once it's full, put your cap back on there. And then whenever you want to utilize this water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water that's already pressurized. 
All right, we're all set up to camp with power and water. Units level and stable. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit, show you a few things on the outside. Again, on your off camp side, our hot water heater. It's the flue for your furnace. Two things on that. One, never block it. Two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear, it does get hot. Fresh water, city water. You got an outdoor shower, hot and cold water in that. There's where your power will store again. You got a vent for your microwave. It's an access panel to the back of your fridge. And then down here is where we'll dump our black and gray tanks. You also have your low point drains right there. Come around back. So you got a brand new spare tire. I recommend getting a cover for that. Keep that from dry rotting over time. Coming around to our campsite. Got a nice outdoor kitchen area here. All set up. You can mount a TV here, cable 110, sink and fridge. Yeah. Check to see if there was a propane on this. We've got outdoor speakers, 110 here. Continue down our campsite, our pass through storage. Your propane does come with a cover. It's on a regulator, simply pointed toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. That well, covers everything out here. Let's take a look on the inside. Before stepping inside, I was trying to find your quick connect LP for a griddle out here. It's actually right here on, on your bumper. So coming up inside your unit, I was thing that I always like to point out first is where the fire extinguisher is. So make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows where that's at in case of an emergency. Coming inside to our left is our awning. Um, let's go ahead and run that out real quick. And press out on your awning. So now on your awning, you're only going to want to run this out until a flap falls down and you can see your bar. If you hold that button down, it's going to keep running itself out and start running itself up backwards. We're real close to some stuff here, so I'm just going to show you. Your flap there falls down, and when that bar comes down, that's as far as you want to go. Now, as I said, if I hold that out, it's just going to keep running and start running itself up backwards, so you don't want to do that. Keep an eye on it when you run in and out. Only run it out as far as you have to. You can stop at any point. You don't have to run it all the way out. Does it no harm whatsoever. That ran back in. Let me mention slam locks work best when gently slammed. All right, now we do have a porch light, but this light to the right does not work. There's your awning light. There's no longer an awning light on there. Coming inside, get your dinette. Remove this leg, legs, and uh, put your table on these lips right here. Put your back cushions on top. That gives you another sleeping quarters. Turn on your TV here. Just wherever you arrive at your uh, campsites, Go into your menu. Oh, we start to see these wind gusts slowing down just a bit. Still staying Way relatively breezy though. Once we head um, to tonight, um, go in, set up your local digital that. channel scan. Um, so to pick up the local channels wherever you're at. All the lighting in here is individual. Just come through and turn it on and off. Coming back around to your fridge, Norco fridge controls. Auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Switch it to just gas, and if that light starts flashing, your gas is low. One through five, five being the coldest. Self-explanatory microwave. See that working. Got a light and fan. Turn this to light. Get your spark. I believe you have to hold it in. Yep. Same thing all the way down. Don't have to hold it in. Just got to get the gas going. 
but you do have a pilot light for the oven so you have to get in there and light the pilot light blow your oven a couple items first your breaker box and fuses handful of 15s couple 40s in there highly recommend having some of those with you then your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector the reason i mentioning that's 12 volt that's always running off your battery Drop boondocking, dry camping, nothing plugged in charging your battery. Disconnect one of them battery posts if you're going to be gone for the day to keep this from running your battery down. Kitchen area, again, more lighting. Some controls up here. Here's where we would check the level of your tanks. Your brand new battery. Fresh, gray, and black tanks. Over here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using that potable water. Your water heater if hooked to gas. Your water heater if hooked to electric makes a difference choose correctly the sound system down here don't know if i pick up any channels in here but we'll give it a quick scan but different modes real quick auxiliary <coughs> fm <coughs> do not see bluetooth compatible but it does say cd player and over here's our thermostat Take your air up real quick. Okay, my quick. You do have a quick dump on them as well. Dump the air out. Shut that off. Go to heat. Crank your furnace up. Hear that kick on. Now, when I shut your furnace off, you'll notice it generally takes a couple of minutes for furnace fans to cycle through before they shut off. Back to your bedroom, you're going to have this door snapped open for travel. I need that banging around everywhere. Nice bungee there to hold that. And show you underneath where your bed will be is your access panel to bypass your hot water heater. You are prepped for a TV back here as well. Cable room 110 up top. There's where your backer is for it. Looks like they have one on here before. Last people come through and head back to your bathroom. A couple things to mention in here. Hand crank open. Oh, power exhaust vent. Um, 110 with GFCI reset. And a little plumbing to maintain. It's PEX nowadays, so just keep an eye on it. Make sure nothing wiggles loose over time. Now let's get ready to leave and close the unit up. I like to start, we we'll shut off our bathroom light, close that door, shut off all of our lighting here, and again, go through the unit and shut off all the individual lights. Walk through, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to be bouncing around, everything's secure for travel. Again. Closing all of your vents if you have any. Just walk through and shut your lighting off. And exit the unit. Now before you leave the dump station, lock, deadbolt, lift and turn this handle. That's how you want that door to travel. Bring up our steps. Bring up our stabilizing jacks. If we are out boondocking, Get up underneath where our fresh water is. Open up that fresh water drain. And head to our closest dump station we're on home. We're at a campsite. Unhook our power, our water, our cable. Hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be behind your tires on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. 10 foot hose comes to your convenience pack. Hook it up and pull your black handle. That's going to be your sewage. When that's all done, you can close that black handle. Pull your gray handle. That's going to be clean the water. It's your sinks and your showers. While my gray handles are dumping, I like to go ahead and dump my fresh water tank. Or excuse me, dump my low point drains right here. And for done camping for the season, Come up to your hot water heater because you don't want to leave this stagnant. Lift up on this pressure release valve. That'll dump some hot water out of this. Be careful. And then you can pull that drain plug.
Come on back down here. See if that gray is done draining. If it is, close that gray up. Grab your sewage hose and conveniently and sanitarily store it right there in your bumper. Again, thank you guys for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this crossroads for many years to come. Happy camping.